Okay, everybody, this is David Skrika. So this is going to be our stock chart of the day for June 26, 2023. Um, these will be a lot more. Um, uh, I'm actually, got, I got an interesting idea how to revamp this here. So this is going to be fun going forward. Um, and actually, I'll talk about it another time. I'm in talks with one company right now, et cetera, et cetera. I got a lot of stuff going on. Um, you know, um, uh, there's a couple of new websites I might write for, um, def definitely a lot of things going on. I know the market's a bit dead right now in terms of, uh, the PMs and these juniors, but I think it's a great opportunity, which we're going to show you in a couple of these stock charts right here. So let's get going. So this is our stock chart of the day in the macro level. And we always, so that member, the basics behind the stock chart of the day is I'm moving away basically from um a subscription based service and towards advertisers right so um the idea is i'll have companies either via cash or stock you know support this and then i'll talk a macro you know chart and then i'll show you you know the company's news and their chart as well so that's that's the basic deal so a couple companies um that we follow um, or, 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 or I guess you could say our sponsors, a stock, ch stock chart of the day, do have um, um, uh, the news out. So anyhow, but our macro chart is not really even a stock chart. It's the yield of the 10-year bond. So what we can see is bond yields have been trending lower um, since about uh, October 2022, which, by the way, is also not a coincidence, in my opinion, that the stock market bottomed at the same time. So but we were still in a long-term secular move. But look, at, we had this huge move from 2021 of under 1% to over 4%. That's a huge move, you know, up, up you could say eightfold, because um, I think it was around 50 basis points was the bottom yield of the 10-year bond. So we have that, you know, um, uh, going on. But that also means like, look, at, you're never going to get a straight up or straight down move. Uh, we're going to go way back to 1980 to show you this. Like bonds were really in a 40-year uh, bull market from uh, 2021 uh, or you know, from 1981 to 2021. So bond prices, bull market, bond yields, bear market or are, are trending lower, right? I don't like to call it a bear market because bond yields trending lower is actually good for most people in terms of mortgages, asset prices going up, et cetera, right? Anyhow, the TNX, uh, so here you can see it here. Um, um, so you can see the bond yields down a little bit today too, about five basis points. So my feeling is we probably saw the top in yields for this move, right? So, um, you know, but again, look at how when it, it trended lower, you know, there were moves higher in the nineties, moves higher in like 87. That's one reason we got the 87 crash, you know, move higher in the late nineties, you know, moved higher, you know, after uh, they cut rates after nine 11, Moved higher for a number of years, right? Moved higher, you know, 2013, 14. And then again from uh, 2017 to 2018, 19. But notice like this trend lower that I lasted for 40 years kind of broke with this move here. You know, we have now actually gone back to 2008 levels. And actually, we we almost got back to pre-financial crisis levels. So, and, you know, that's our stock chart of the day. I think we're in a long-term bear market for bonds bull market for yields and but you know if we especially if we do see a recession etc inflation is trending lower in the short term you know we could see yields go back down to i don't know two two and a half percent on the 10-year bond before they again move higher right and if you go look at um uh i'll, I'll go to google here and i'll just i'm just going to get a quick chart 1970s bond yields uh, let's get an images and yeah, we can see here um, in the 70s, let's go here to U.S. Treasury. It's tough to see this, but you can see, see there were down ticks here, down tick here, down tick here, down tick here before it up. So there were rallies, of course, the whole way down. And again, notice that bond cycles, it's interesting just to look at this chart too. Bond cycles are very long in in nature, right? If we look at this chart, you'll see that. Really, they trended lower actually from you know you know 1800 to 1900. But if you if you consider this a little up like here, but so really they went lower to um, you know from 1800 
to about 1815 and then higher to about 1870 and then lower to 1900, then higher to about 1920 and then, you know, lower till 19, you know, late forties and then really higher till, you know, and here. So you can see the, these cycles are very long. They're 20, 30, 40 years sometimes in duration. So that's basically it. Right. So, um, and I don't know if we're going to go back to here. The problem is the government is so indebted. They cannot really afford these kind of yields, which is why I still think inflation will trend higher longer term. So anyhow, so now let's look at some of these, uh, some of our companies. This is emergent, which is, uh, you can see trended lower. Like all the juniors look like this this year. Um, I do own this company. I did have a marketing agreement with them. I no longer have the marketing agreement. Uh, but I still, um, I still own, own, um, uh, the, the company, um, uh, you know, and I have warrants in it, et cetera. And my family owns it as well. So, um, I might start picking away at it soon, but emergent here's, what's amazing. They 11 days ago. So on June 15th, they announced this corporate update, right. And in this corporate update, they basically announced that, um, they're selling off this property, um, to uh, Lohantan, uh, hopefully I pronounced that right, you know, LG on TSX Venture, um, you know, for, you know, um, the 1.4 million in expenditures and 1.8 million in cash payments, 3.2 million. The entire market cap of Emergent is 3.4 million. So essentially this property they're getting for what the current value of the market cap is. And that's, you know, that doesn't even include, obviously, uh, you know, they're big, they're big, for property right now is New York Canning. They're working with Canicot, which is a subsidiary of um, Rio Tinto. And Rio is, uh, we'll show you that in a second. Rio is a huge, you know, large cap. You can see Rio is a huge company, $63 a share, you know. And Rio has, has made this one of their top exploration projects. So, and Rio, what's great about this is Rio is essentially spending all the money on this property, right? And then, um, and that's kind of their mainstay property. And you can see it's already got a mineral resource measured of about 800,000 ounces indicated of 3.2 million ounces total of 4 million ounces. And then uh, and th those are silver ounces, just so you know, and inferred of 1.2, right? So, um, and that's, and the nice thing about that is you can see gold 52,000, you know, uh, 240, 40,000, about 300,000 roughly measured and indicated. So nice thing about this too is if you're a silver bull, and I think there's more upside in silver. We've shown this in the past. I'll do another video on that because this is not the point of this video. You know, EMR is a very cheap way to do it. So again, selling off a property for basically what the company is worth market cap wise, and then having a, a, a property that has a resource of 300,000 ounces of gold and 4 million ounces, um, um, uh, you know, silver. And, you know, and 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 having a major basically do all the work on it. So amazing that it remains this cheap. So another thing I'm looking at here um, is um, another uh, is newfound gold recently had some good results. So this was one of our big winners. Uh, I got people into financing at this pre IPO at a dollar. Uh, newfound gold went to as high as as thirteen dollars a share. Um, so I had people writing me about how much money they made in this, and you know, one guy's a, a doctor in Chicago and was like, you know, telling me basically every dinner I ever have with the guy will be on him, you know, which is nice, you know. And uh, for the disclosure, I actually don't own any of this at the moment. Um, um, uh, I'm kind of waiting because you know, after a huge move like this, we're kind of digesting. The gains we can see Newfoundland just had. Um, uh, they're just uh, doing a, they're doing a, a seismic survey at the property right now to kind of do you know uh, identify default zones. This just came out a few hours ago, so this this press release. Remember, I'll have this all underneath here. So um, by by October, they'll be able to have more uh, uh, test targets uh, outlined by that seismic survey, and you can see this ninety five. Uh, yeah, more great results a few days ago, 95.7 grams over three meters. Um, you know, you can see right here, there's a, an interval of, of just under a meter of 350 uh, grams, um, you know, a gold, and this is gold, not silver, by the way. 
So they continue to pull out holes like this. This is one reason this stock has, you know, a $1 billion market cap, as opposed to these other juniors I just showed you, um, uh, or other juniors that have, uh, are small. So anyhow, I, uh, you, know, you know, because they've pulled out holes like this. So I'm going to end it on that because these are supposed to be short videos. I'm going to do more stock chart of the days. Now, underneath this, we have links to the, the press releases if you wish to read them in detail. But I'm going to do more of these tomorrow. I'm going to have a lithium um, a company and a uranium company that um, that have been on my service. And I'm going to really try to do this three to five times a week, you know, depending on whatever. But I think doing it in video form, if I can get, you can email me back, get some feedback on it. I think you all admit is is a lot better. Thanks.